We're back at the makeover house, and so far we've been kicking goals, but this is our biggest challenge yet. Over the next two weeks, we're going to tackle the front yard. Now, even if you're not going to replicate everything that we're going to be doing here, there is going to be plenty of take-home tips that you can use at home. But we need to start with my favourite, and I'm lying, we need to start with the clean-out. Woo! Come on, Jace, get involved! Here, give us a hand. I'm getting old. Come on, mate, a bit more, a bit Ooh. more. <laughs> That's got to go. Oh. Hey! Well, it's a good time to stop and talk to you. Now, this was originally a courtyard, and then the garden's taken over, and it was really just an access point to get to the carport and the front door. We're going to turn it back into a beautiful courtyard. Pebble Crete, I mean, it's really dated. It definitely served its purpose, but the problem is these stones are really slippery, so when it rains, it's actually dangerous to walk down to the front door. Well, I reckon they're quite good compared to the dated tile on the front patio. <laughs> now, this slope, I might have been exaggerating it before, but I tell you, if there was two drops of water on there, a little old lady with a crook hip should be in hospital in a couple of hours after walking down here. Whee, slipping over. So, yes, this is going to be big. Over the next two weeks on the show, we're going to add a new front park. Then we're going to create a courtyard with decking and a sandstone retaining wall. And a new fire pit to cosy up the space. Can't we fix this up, will you? <laughs> You're all right, aren't you? It's only weeds. <laughs> Come on, big boy, get Come up. on, get into it. Who <laughs> put all the weight on the right hand side? <laughs> Trick for young players. Stingers, why are you there? Jace. Ready? Yep. Oh. Now, I know it doesn't look like much now, but I'm going to get you up to speed. We've dug out the footings. The boys are still going hard on the second retaining wall. So imagine if we dug this ground all the way back. Oh. So much digging, but just by terracing it, it saves my back and you watch it. Saves their back and me watching. <laughs> What Ads is doing now is screening out the road base. We're going to compact that. The reason why I'm watering this first stretch of about five or six metres is I need access. The retaining wall is great big sandstone boulders. So I want to be able to get the truck in here and just crane them straight into position. So these moraines are going to come out and be put back in. Dan, you want a drink? Want a drink? Now, when you're taking the plants out, do them one at a time. Don't dig them all out and then start potting them up. It just means that you get a good feel for how big the root ball has to be to fit the pot. It means they're out of the ground for the shortest amount of time, so they go through the least amount of stress. The idea here is to cover up this pebble concrete and these ugly tiles. A lot of you can probably relate to it when you've got an old style house like this one. Now we're lucky because we've got a step up in the floor, so I want to line up with the floor inside. To do that, I'm going to be using treated pine sleepers to make the frame and then covering it with decking boards. So that will be the one level all the way to here and then it's going to step up. So the first thing I need to do is bust this concrete out. And for that, I've got Big Boy here to help me out. Let's go, mate. Yeah. I came in like a wrecking ball. Oh, and then I didn't break at all. Oh. Nah, it's not working. Yeah, come on. Oh, brilliant. That's my job done. Bring in the workers. Oh, they listen. That actually worked. That's amazing. I'll help them out. I'm a good bloke, and they need help anyway. Come on, boys. Well, I promised you big, the makeover house is getting big. Have a look at these bad boys, and that's why we're plonking. Not dig, not lay, but plonk. 
The retaining wall is great big sandstone boulders. So each of these stones is about half a tonne. Chances of moving by hand are done in Buckley's. Using a hydraulic lift on the back of the truck. Got these grippers down. Thank you. Stonehenge, eat your heart out. Stonehenge. <laughs> hey. Stone hodge. <laughs> Best thing about these, once you get going, you can get a lot in quickly. It's all in the preparation. If this was brickwork, it'd take days. We'll knock it over in an afternoon. Days? Your old man would get it done in a couple of hours, well, mate. Well, he had to pay my feed bill. <laughs> the other thing about them, as you can see, I'm using for its main purpose. They double as perfect seats. Now, to get a straight line, we're working with the outside face because, obviously, on the inside here, it's all going to get filled up with soil. It's looking pretty good there, Jase. Thank you. ready to start making the frames for our boardwalk. I'm using some 150 by 75 treated pine timber. It's H4, and I've decided to use that because we don't have much ground clearance underneath our frame. I've got all my measurements, so I'm going to cut up all the material, assemble the frames, and then I can put them in place. One thing you want to remember when you're working with material that's as thick as this and you're screwing it together, is to make sure you do a clearance hole through the first piece and then a pilot hole through the rest. That way, your screw has a hole to follow and it will make the job a lot easier. Now the frames are complete. Now it's a matter of just levelling it up, using some Dynabolts to hold it in place. Ready to start cutting up the decking boards. Now I'm going to be cutting these oversized, and then once I've laid them in place, I'll be doing the final cut. Colours, gorgeous. It's a pretty good looking dance floor. Now for these boards, I've decided to go with 135 wide. And that's so it ties in with the decking boards that we used at the back. But I really do love this spotted gum board because you can see the variance in each board in colour. It is gorgeous and it really ties in with the colours on the sandstone. And I'm just using these four mil spacers and I've chalked a straight line, then I'll use this smart bit to pre-drill and countersink my holes before we put our screw in. But if you do that every time, you can't go wrong. Now, to fix it in place, I'm just using these stainless steel 50mm square head screws. Because now we can just get our straight line and run the power saw right through. Now, the reason I'm getting rid of all the lawn is because at the moment, even though it's green, it's a bit of kikuya, it's a bit of cooch, and it's a lot of weeds. Now, getting rid of the old lawn is super important so it doesn't grow through on the new lawn. That's where a turf cutter comes in. If you tried to do this by hand, you'd be here for a month of Sundays. And you know what they say, first impressions count for everything. So this front lawn is front and centre. Looks like I've got some competition. Morning. Morning. So if you get your timing right, you can get your delivery to come straight in, saving you hours on the barrow. That's using your brain and not your back. 
And when it comes to what you ask for, well, turf underlay's changed a lot over the years. It used to be really sandy with no organic matter in it at all. Now it's got heaps of organics in it because your lawn is just like every other plant. It needs stuff to feed on. Drivers, blow your horn. I've been working on the road all the long, long day. Learned that in year one. And again in year one the next year. Now we've got to the most rewarding bit, albeit the most physical, because you've got to lift these up and carry them in. What are we working with? Ta-da! DNA certified soft leaf buffalo. Why do they call it soft leaf? Well, when I was a kid, you get all hot and sweaty and then you'd lie on the lawn and the grass had little edges on it, like tiny little serrated scissors. Well, now with the soft leaf, you don't have that. So kids these days, they're spoilt rotten. Because if we do the outside edges first, we've just got to colour it in and it'll look a million bucks in the next hour. Place looks better already. If you've got an old saw in the shed that's no good for cutting timber anymore, don't throw it out because it's perfect for things like this. The Hodgy Aussie Grass Saw is available in one size, it's guaranteed to be blunt, and it's yours for just $49.95. Can I have my saw back, mate, please? Sure, I was just sitting up here. <laughs> when it comes to watering, it's super important that you don't let your turf dry out. Get a sprinkler under it as quick as you can. Lawn's good, this is fantastic, yeah. but now we've actually got to bring people into the house and this just doesn't cut the mustard. No, nah, definitely. So I want to cover up the tiles. I'm going to keep the deck flowing around and coming up here. Beautiful. Now, it gets a bit steep here, so I reckon if I put three quick steps in, yep. then we can have a nice little gentle level change. I think while I'm at it, <sighs> the letterbox has got to go. There you go, something a bit more substantial. Look, I can touch my toes. <laughs> I'll leave you to it, mate. It's a problem a lot of people have. Old tiles at the front of your house that you want to get rid of. Now, most of the time, you're going to have a step up like this one here. So I'm going to be using the decking boards to cover these up. The easiest way to do that is to use some treated pine sleepers. I'm going to pack them level and then bolt them down to the slab and then I'll be able to continue the decking boards around. It's an easier way to do it. There's hardly any mess because you don't have to rip up any tiles. And to hold these sleepers in place, I'm just using these anchor screws. They're a little bit different to a Dynabolt, which usually flares out as you do it up. These ones, you can see they have the thread going all the way up, which means you're always going to grab to whatever you're going into. Unlike ads, who can go over the top of the tiles, because this pebble creates on a slope, we need to take it out. I lift it up off the ground. That's the hard bit, obviously. And then little G, because there's separation, hits it with a sledgy and it breaks nice and easy. Go to town. Oh, hello, sir. How are you going? Your timing is impeccable. Thanks very Can much. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Yeah, sure, yeah. How long have you done this run here for? Uh, 15 years. 15 years you put up with this letterbox? Yeah, I'll get into it sometimes, yeah. It's just too low, you know, and yeah. Time to say goodbye. Oh, no. Perfect. Perfect. Now we can't get any bills. There you go. Well, no. There was no cash in there, but no thank cash, you. No checks. Tomorrow, there will be a shiny new letterbox. Perfect. See awesome. You then. Thank you. See you later. And once you have all the battens down, then you can just lay out and screw off all your decking boards.
Feeling strong? Give up, Keith! <laughs> Holy hate! <laughs> Just lift it up, Jace. <laughs> Good work, mate. Try this at home, kids. You all right? Yes. I'm trying to work out what, what's going on here. <laughs> I should have spaced the joystick. Yes, yes, ha, ha. Thank you, Jason. You're a champion. After all that effort getting in the frames, finishing it off is quite simple. Concreting in some stumps and screwing it off. And then we can continue cladding them in the decking. When it comes to putting it back into position, I do it two or three at a time before I push the saw back. And I do it with a trench. If you dig a trench, that means you can move them up and down easily. Give it a feed and wait for spring, and you won't know they'd been moved. I love digging. All right, so our sand stone's turned up. It is as flash as a rat with a golden tooth. Costs a bit of money, so you'd look after it properly. Normally, I'd pour a concrete slab, but we're in luck here. Nice, firm footings. We've cut the stairs out without disturbing the soil, put down about 50 mil of road base, compact it with the size 10s, and then going to lay it on some mud. Now, I say mud all the time, but it's really mortar, which means for every handful of sand, I can have five or six of these to one handful of the cement. Times that by shovels and barrels, and you do the same maths. I lay it on mud because the mud's wet, it's like some silky, it's got a bit of movement to it. When I put a level on it, I can see it's a tad high. When I said I was building the letterbox, uh, it was a technical term because actually Adam's dug the hole, <laughs> almost lifting the uh, sandstone for me, and then you've got to clutter with timber and make the hole and everything. That's right. So I'm just hoping that the hole's deep enough, yeah? Well, if it's not, you'll hear about it. <laughs> but if it looks good, I build it. If something goes wrong, you know, he's doing the best he can. It's just the usual. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. Perfect. Perfect. Now I just have to carve our faces into it. Like those American presidents on the side of the hill. All right, start chiseling, mate. Now, this nose, just a little bit smaller. Yeah, this yeah. nose's not big <laughs> enough. <laughs> now, Jason and I have the sandstone block in place. So I can get on to making the letterbox. Now, I've got all my material cut up. I'm using some marine ply. So the next step is to start assembling it. That's the main frame of our letterbox together. But it's going to look pretty average if we sit this on the beautiful sandstone block over there. So to blend it all in, I'm going to be cladding it with this spotted gum decking, which will obviously match in with the decking boards that we've already laid. Now, the first thing I need to do is to cut out this slot out of the first board. That way, we've got somewhere to put our bills. To do that, I'm going to be using a jigsaw to cut it out. And to hold the boards in place, I'm just using some adhesive and these 50 mil stainless steel decking screws.
Righto, Ads, give that a go, mate. Quick, quick, he's coming. <laughs> quick, quick, quick. Oh, ah. Wow, where good well, is that? Perfect timing. Absolutely spot on. Uh, as compared to the neighbourhood. Oh, mate, it's the best one in the suburb. Yes! Yeah, the best one. So, well done, fellas. Yeah, it's got a poster approval. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> mate. Thanks, Thank you. See you later. Catch you, see you later. Love oh, a good poster. Yeah, that's awesome, mate. Now, Ads might have done all the hard work with making the tin box and cladding it and blah, blah, blah. I'm a builder. But putting the number on is just as important, if not more important, because let's face it, you might get a few bills in the letterbox, but you're getting a lot of pizzas delivered to that front door. Been a lot happening in this front yard, but there's one thing we haven't spoken about, and that's the fire pit that we're putting in. And with any fire pit, you need somewhere to store the wood. So I'm going to be making a timber frame. I'm using these hardwood sleepers. First step is to start cutting them up to size and making a simple ladder frame. All right. The other thing you'll notice, I've just gone around the edges with an electric planer to knock that sharp edge off. That way, no one will get a splinter when they're going to get their firewood out. Jeez, I'm a nice bloke. I've ordered another 25 metres of the Dino Certified Sir Walter, and we're going to dress up the entrance. Let's take it's like rolling out the red carpet. <laughs> I didn't say they'll light. <laughs> and I've just repeated the process another four times. Now we've got heaps of space to tie the frames together. I've just got some offcuts of decking boards and I'm using these 50mm bugles. Thanks, mate. Free drill every time. Like a well oiled machine. Red or light up. Mate, I'm enjoying working with you. <laughs> Why's that? You made the letterbox, but I took all the glory because I put the numbers on it. Yeah. Now you've made this, and I'll take all the glory because I'll stack the timber. Because you're going to light it up. <laughs> but you can I do the bit it. down the back. Yeah, easy, right? I'll, I'll bend down for you, Jase. <laughs> Come on, keep it coming. No time for fun and games. You've got a fire to start. Now we're going to colour in with the plants and it starts to go from a landscape to a garden. You can see how it was before. Plain, lots of hedges and a bit of maintenance. Well, the five different plants we're putting in, they'll be next to no maintenance. The ones I've got in my hand are called limelights. They're in a case here, which is a tree, wattle tree, without the tree. And this one here is a she-oak, which is a great big tree without the tree, and it's called cousin it. They'll never need pruning. They'll just mound up and form little balls. This one, Miss Muffet, you might prune it once a year if you're lucky, but it does keep a nice ball shape. And then we've got Poa. That'll all be nice and full. We'll eliminate that slope. You won't be walking down there, but it'll still be nice and green to match the lawn. We're going to spot plant it through here. This letterbox is absolutely stunning. Suburbs best, apparently, and posty approved. Haha, <laughs> good timing, Jace. Look at this. Wow, we. Oh, so you got all the flash hardwood over there and you come with a bag of kindling. Yeah, I'll eat this tip from Bear Grylls and the starters. <laughs> From down here, it feels amazing. And I love the level changes in the decking. It's just cleaned the whole place up and invites you to get to the front door. I know it's unusual having this kind of semi in a front yard, but I reckon if you've got the right neighborhood, yep. you plonk this in and they'll come from far and wide. And that's what it's about. It's yeah, about it getting people together, having a chin wag like this and relaxing. That's what it's all about, Jay. So basically you're saying we did all of this for a five. Yes, we did all of this for a five bit. We could have just done that. 